So in Italian, they have this uh, lovely expression which they use quite a bit. Uh, it's a quotation, I'm not sure if he ever actually said it, but it's a quotation from Napoleon, uh, who said, in English it would be the, the, the equivalent of, are we ready? And everyone says, yes. Are we steady? Yes. And then, off you go. You know, it's in the difference there. We, are we ready? Are we steady? Off you go. As in, he's sending all of these plebs into into battle, you know, and uh, not willing to fight himself. Uh, this is an interesting idea when we think about uh, today's, today's gospel, when we have Jesus who speaks very, very clearly. And I love this, this I love this, uh, I love the gospels like this that show that Jesus isn't a kind of a, a soft, kind of a politically correct pansy that, um, that people kind of often present him as, you know what I mean, with little rosy cheeks and, you know, he just helps cats out of trees and stuff. Like Jesus, Jesus did battle with the forces of evil. So he did the battle with the, with the corruption of the time, but also with sin and death for all time. I mean, when he takes that cross upon his shoulders and dies upon it, this isn't a kind of a, a you know, a gentle, oh, sure, we'll see, let's, let's all just live in perfect harmony and sing kumbaya. Like, I mean, he's, he's bleeding to death out of love for us. So Jesus goes to battle for us. Uh, and he sees, so he, this is the same, the same guy, that same heart, that same person, the same motivation, who looks at the scribes and the Pharisees and is appalled at their hypocrisy. And that's the, the big word for today. Uh, the big word in today's gospel is hypocrisy. Alas for you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you're like whitewashed tombs. You look all handsome on the outside, but inside you're full of dead men's bones and every kind of corruption. Again, he says, alas for you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you who build the sepulchres of the prophets and you decorate the tombs of holy men, saying, we would never have joined in the shedding of the blood of the prophets had we lived in our father's day. But he knows what their thoughts are as regards him. The greatest, not so much the greatest of all prophets, but like God himself, uh, the, the, the person that these prophets were, were preparing for. So he calls them hypocrites. And hypocrisy is something... Uh, Maybe we can, some people can maybe justify other sins. You can kind of maybe justify anger, maybe if there's kind of a righteous anger. Maybe you can justify jealousy if there's kind of a jealousy within marriage and I'm jealous of my wife. Maybe there are certain kind of ways of, cert of justifying certain sins in certain circumstances, possibly lame is stealing bread, you know. I mean, you can, there are certain maybe sins that you can maybe understand, not diminish the, the, the not, not, not uh, justify entirely, but hypocrisy stinks. No one likes hypocrisy. There's something about hypo hypocrisy. It's just awful. Like There's something about a leader, especially, who, as Italians would say, you know, lives, preaches water but drinks wine. There's just something that really, really stinks about it. When, when someone uh, lives in a way that's incoherent with what they expect of others. So they, they demand high standards of others while their standards are very, very low. And it's the typical argument that you will see used in, 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 in religious circles, also in politics, in families. It's, it's, it's an argument that, that very easily comes to mind when we see someone not doing what they're expecting us to do, right? So are you in the church, you know, you, whatever you're asking us to, to give to charity when you're, you have these huge marble-clad buildings and, and gold chalices and so on and so forth. Little ten second explanation of that. Um, <laughs> those buildings are built for the glory of God and they don't belong to any one person and they don't belong to any one generation, by the way. They last for generation after generation. So if you, if you spread it out, they're not as hugely expensive as it may seem. Also, even chalices and that, we're giving them to God. He deserves the best. And there is no uh, government, no, NGO, that does more for third world countries than the Catholic Church, just so that, let, let that be known. Um, just not so we don't get lost in detail here either. Okay, moving on. Uh, so we do take care of the poor as well as, for now, okay, moving back to that point, uh, we give to God and to our neighbour. It's both, it's both. But we do have to give. We, do, we should give good things to God because he deserves them. And also for us, if we were to celebrate Mass on dirty altar cloths with some cups and saucers that we found in the kitchen there, I mean, does that glorify God anymore or does that, does that impoverish or show less respect for the great gift that we're, that we're celebrating here? I think it... I think it shows more disrespect for God, which then impoverishes the whole church. So, okay, that aside. Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy, but that's something that will be said, you know what I mean? The, the, 
you, say, yeah, you say we should be generous and charitable, but you have these big churches and big buildings. Or uh, politicians the same way, you know what I mean? That they're asking us now, that they're increasing taxes and they're asking us to tighten our belts when they drive around in their big flashy cars. You know, it's the kind of thing we hear very often, you know, or, or any, any kind of a manager, you know, again, like uh, the, the, the workers on, on, on the floor have to take a pay cut while he's still smoking his big cigars and drinking brandy all day. It's just these, these kind of expressions that you hear, you know, people can't stand hypocrisy. And I understand it. And I was asking myself today, I was just thinking, just praying about this, like I'm thinking, what, 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 what is it about hypocrisy that we don't like? What is it that really stinks about hypocrisy? I think it's that the hypocrite, because they know what to say to us, or maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't, you know, maybe we, we can all be somewhat hypoc hypocritical in our lives, but because they know what to say, they know what the right thing is. So it's not that they're ignorant of what the right thing is. They know what it is. And they know that they should be doing it and that everyone else should be doing it. So in that way, they're, they're, they're right. what they say is right often. You know, what they say is correct. Yes, we should be giving to charity. Yes, we should tighten our belts. Or maybe for the survival of the company, yes, everyone has to take a 5% pay cut. So maybe that's just factually the case. So they know what the truth is. They just don't do it themselves. Do you know what I mean? So it's like they're not ignorant of the law. They know, they know very, very well what they should be doing. They just won't do it themselves. And that's what really, you know, when you see, a, when you see children kind of play fighting or messing or making mistakes, and they don't have, well, maybe they do know that if something belongs to someone else, you shouldn't pull it off them while they're playing with it. But more or less, you can kind of excuse them, you know, ignorance of the law and so on and so forth. But uh, a hypocrite, like, they know what we're supposed to be doing. They know what they're supposed to do. They're just not willing to make the sacrifice. They're not willing to make the sacrifice themselves. They know what should be done, but they want everyone else to make the sacrifice, but not them. And that's why, like, the, 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 you know, I was thinking of inspirational leaders today, and unfortunately, like, the, the person that came to mind was someone like William Wallace, you know? Uh, now, of course, that the reality of the man might be quite different to the movie uh, Braveheart, but that, that kind of idea, when you see a leader uh, ride into battle, leading the charge, not standing back and letting all the pawns go in first, but leading the charge. That, 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 that's the kind of person that people rally behind. Because why? Because they're not a hypocrite. Because, yes, they, they know what needs to be done. Yes, we need to fight for our own freedom. Okay, very good. But I'm willing to fight with you. I know what needs to be done, and I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to sacrifice myself. Think of the, the leaders of, the, of, of, of Ireland as well. I mean, pro-treaty and treaty, either side, both sides were willing to, to make huge sacrifices and take huge risks uh, for, for, the, for the freedom of Ireland. So we see leaders willing to do, they know what needs to be done, but they're willing to do it themselves. They know what needs to be done, but they're willing to make the sacrifice themselves. And that's the complete opposite to hypocrisy. And that's what makes people so inspirational, leaders so inspirational. I've told the story before, but uh, one occasion a lady went to, to Gandhi and said, uh, Dear sir, I presume it begins something like that. Dear sir, uh, my, son, my son here, he's eating way too much sugar. It's going to rot his teeth out and maybe the rest of his head while he's at it. He's just eating too much sugar. Can you tell him to stop eating so much sugar? And Gandhi looks at the mother, looks at the son and says, Can you come back to me in a week? And she says, Okay. So a week later, she comes back and she says, um, hello, sir, I, I was here with you last week. I came, with, I came to you with my son who's eating far too much sugar and it's going to rot his teeth out. Can you do something about it? And he said, sure. So he looks at the son and he says, stop eating sugar. And he says, okay. And she looks at him kind of perplexed and said, why didn't you just say that last week? And he said, well, in order for your son to listen to my words, I gave up sugar for the week. I give up sugar for the week. You know, and it's just, again, this, this anti-hypocrisy, this idea of if I'm asking you to do something, I'm willing to do it first. I'm willing to lead the charge. I can't ask you to pray if I don't pray. I can't ask you to make sacrifices if I don't make sacrifices. I can't ask you to try to, to strive for a virtuous life if I don't. And so, in a way, maybe if we dig deep enough, we'll probably find a little hypocrisy in all of us. 
where we know what needs to be done and we don't want everyone else to do it. And maybe we're just not willing to do it ourselves in, to greater or lesser degrees. This isn't just as regards religious things, it's also as regards you know, practical things as well. Where we know what needs to be done but when, when we want everyone else to do it, but we're just not willing to make the sacrifice ourselves. Interestingly, the word hypocrisy comes from the Greek word for actor. Actor. So, as hypocrites, we put on a certain show. I remember uh, I was at a, a funeral years ago, and um, I wouldn't have been, well, no, it's years ago, so I was, I, was, well, I was in my upper teens. I wasn't so familiar with how funerals work. You know, there's a certain kind of Irish etiquette as regards funerals, who sits where, and, you know, how... Uh, the order of things. There's just, there's just a way of, of doing things that I wasn't very familiar with. So I was hanging out with a couple of farmer friends of my dad's. And um, so we went to the, to the burial and the, the coffin was laid down. And then one of the friends, uh, one of my father's friends, says to me, he says, look, <coughs> we'll go over there to that little patch of high ground over there. And I said, grand job, yeah, no bother. You know, is, is, is this where the, you know, is this must be where certain people go, I don't know, I mean, I'm just, it, there's obviously a reason for this, okay, so, so we got to the, the high ground, and uh, so, and he just kind of stands there, just, and just kind of looks around, and I said, what, what are we doing up here, by the way, and he said, oh, just so people will see us, <laughs> what, we're going to a funeral, so people will see us, and people, oh, Jimmy was there, and the young, young fellow, the Cals, he was there as well, yeah, so we, saw, we saw him above, we saw him above in the graveyard, yeah. I, I, I've, never, I've never seen this, I've never, never realised that this was a thing before, you know? To do certain things to be seen, to be an actor, you know, put on this facade of religiosity or that you care or whatever it was, you know? We ask the Lord today to highlight to us, and it, uh, these are always dangerous prayers to make, but they're good. We ask the Lord to show us if there's any hypocrisy in our lives. Are there any things that that we want people to do, we want everyone else to do, but aren't willing to do ourselves? Are there any aspects of our lives that we're, we're, we're holding on to, not willing to make the sacrifice, even though we know what the Lord is asking of us? We know what he wants. Whether that be an attachment to, to, to money or success, or if it's just laziness, or if it's just I, just, I know I should pray, but I don't, but I want everyone else to pray then when I've got a problem. Whatever, whatever it may be, whatever issue there is, we ask the Lord to root all hypocrisy out of our hearts. Show us what it is, Lord. Help us to do battle with it. And grant that we may live the kind of lives that you're calling us to live. Amen. So dear brothers and sisters, this is Father Patrick Cahill here. Thank you so much for joining us for our homilies here on YouTube or whatever platform you're listening on. Uh, I work here in a place called Holy Family Mission where we form young people in the faith. We have a great need here in Ireland and indeed across the world of knowing our faith and being capable of going out there and sharing it uh, competently with others. If we can't understand our faith, if we don't know our faith, we can't uh, bring anybody into it. No one is brought into the faith. Uh, no one is compelled to come into the faith. People see us live the faith. So in order to, to live it, we have to know what the Lord is expecting of us. So our goal here is to form young people in the faith. And we're starting into our eighth year now, which is a great privilege and uh, a great joy for us all. We're starting on 24th of September. We are in need of benefactors, though. Uh, we have a, a beautiful house which was given to us here by the Rossmanian order. Uh, it's fantastic, it's wonderful, but it is high maintenance and these days all those things are very expensive. If you feel the Holy Spirit moving your heart to support our mission here in Holy Family, we're hoping to raise about €25,000 before uh, 20, the 24th of September, before the start of the year here. We're about we have about 10,000 raised so far, but we need your help to, to get to 25 if we can. We have some renovations to do on the house here, and we need to support uh, our young people as they come in here to start this year of faith formation. So if the Holy Spirit is asking you to pray to support us financially, please, please do so on our website, holyfamilymission.ie. 
Uh, if not, please pray for us. Please pray that uh, our mission here will always be protected and that we'll always do the will of God and that his glory may be made manifest in all that we do and all that is done through Holy Family and all that, that they do, uh, all that the Holy Family mission team will do throughout the year and all that the alumni will do uh, in their various workplaces uh, and study uh, universities, colleges, wherever they'll be afterwards. We ask that the Lord will always guide them to be effective ministers of uh, Christ's word in the world. So please feel free uh, to support our mission and please pray for us. God bless. Bye now.